is the Big O Show. This is the Big O Show. All right, we told you that uh, Matt Schodell from Kane Sport would be kind enough to join us. Go to the website, canesport.com. You can follow uh, Matt on Twitter at Kane Sport. Matt, how you doing, my friend? What's up, Big O? How you doing? I'm hanging in there, brother. It's just, uh, you know, I didn't have a lot of hope for that game last night, and when it was 21 nothing, I said, okay, this is what I kind of expected. But what I didn't expect, and to the kids' credit, uh, those guys fought back, and, man, Nikozi Perry played the best game we've ever seen him play in a U.M. uniform. Yeah, I mean, Rhett Lashley deserves a lot of credit for what he's done with the offense. He's sort of minimized some of the offensive line issues with his scheme and then De'Ara King having good mobility. And, uh, you know, I think it was really interesting that when Nikozi came in, you could really see the difference in the offense then, right? Because when it's a different quarterback and a new system, it's not like comparing apples to apples, right? right. When you saw how Nikosi Perry operated in that different system, I mean, he looked really good. And I don't think it's because he's that much of a different quarterback than uh, previously, you know? So I really think that speaks volumes to Rhett Lashley. Just the fact this guy who, you know, I can't imagine. I mean, look, everyone says, oh, yeah, he prepared like he's starting. I mean, everyone says that, but nobody really does it um, for the most part. So, I mean, the fact he could just jump in there and, and play like that and make some of those throws and, you know, and just some of the stuff that just came wide open for him on some of the short throws. It was really impressive. Yeah, no, um, uh, and listen, if they hang on to those drops, uh, we're talking about a w- we're talking about a win and monster stats for that kid. Yeah, well, that's the problem with this team. It's just like <laughs> it, it just seems like whatever can go wrong does go wrong. Like it, it, it's really a mystery. I mean, how does a team? It, it's almost like a microcosm of the season. Like, how does a team that looked that bad against Clemson and North Carolina in the first quarter of this game? Then all of a sudden they look as good the next two quarters as they did against Duke. And then in the final quarter, it was like a little bit of everything. It was like a, a, the season all in one game. It was like really weird to me. I, I, I still am processing the game itself because I can't remember as weird a game as this was where a Miami team looked that unprepared and then all of a sudden looked that good. And then all of a sudden, like in the last couple of drives, couldn't do anything when it was moving the ball so well enough. It was, it was like, a, I, I wrote that it was like a schizophrenic game. It was really weird to watch from a Miami perspective, because there was no consistency, um, you know, really on either side of the ball. You know, the offense looked great at times and looked terrible at times. The defense looked terrible at the start and looked really good and then not so good again in the fourth quarter. Like, it was just weird, man. Yeah, and well, when you talk about a lack of consistency for the team, let me go with a lack of consistency for fans, for former players, for some media yeah. members, because – the criticism of this team also drives me crazy. Because, <laughs> well, you know, the funniest thing, yeah. <laughs> let, 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 me, let, me, let me run this by you. Everybody wants Blake Baker fired, okay? And they make it sound like Blake Baker is the only problem on this team. And then, uh, and then I'm just trying to be fair here. I'm not saying he's doing a great job either. But do I blame him that they have no linebackers? Do I blame him that his best defensive end opted out and then his second and third best ones – dropped out for the bowl game. Do I blame him that Mike Rump and company can't come up with a decent secondary? Uh, On the flip side, do I blame the offensive coordinator, Rhett Lashley, for the six drops? Do I blame him for the guard missing, you know, on a penalty that negated a touchdown? Do I blame him for the Nikosi Perry fumble? You know, uh, my problem is I think we're, we're kind of crazy and inconsistent about all of this. The two coaches, the assistant coaches, I can't blame them for everything. But what I can blame is I can blame the head coach because he's the guy that brings on the assistant. He's the guy that's been part of the recruiting of that defense for years now as an assistant and as the head coach. So, And it's a team that's unprepared. They start the game 21 nothing. I, I got to point at the guy at the top. Instead of picking and choosing, oh, no, this is all on Blake Baker, everything cannot be on Blake Baker. I just find that to be almost a lazy take, my brother. You tell me. I mean, look, every every Miami fan, when something goes wrong, wants to fire all the coaches. I mean, it's never, you know, look, the biggest problem I think Miami's had, honestly, aside from obviously not getting the players at the level they need, is having consistency with the coaching period. Like, you you can't, if you look at some of the really good programs, they, they tend to have, 
a coach that's around for a little while that really can build up um, his own recruiting classes and sort of make some statements on his own. You know, when you look at the Clemson's, when Florida State was really, really good, um, you, you know, so even even when Ohio State was really good, they had consistency in the coaches and the assistant coaches. And like Miami just hasn't had that. They keep having turnover. And a big part of that is that Miami fans are not patient and they don't want to be patient. And maybe they shouldn't be patient. But the truth is, until you get that consistency with coaching and the players sort of know what to expect year in and year out and where that freshman is now a senior in the same system and has seen it for three or four years and doesn't have a new position coach every two or three years and doesn't have a new coordinator every two or three years and doesn't have a new head coach every three or four years. Like, you can't expect a team to be great like that. And everybody wants a quick fix. Like, look at Jim Harbaugh, right? He comes in and everyone's like, oh, my Lord, he's an amazing coach in year one, right? Yeah. Well, it turns out maybe he wasn't so amazing, right? And you got to remember, these the first two or three years that a coach comes in, and maybe not in Manny Diaz's case, but in most cases, they're coaching a different coach's player. So obviously Manny was a defense coordinator. It's a little bit different. Um, you know, but what upsets me the most with this team, and and you can put this on the coaching for sure, is, is the defense somehow got worse, um, even with those defensive ends that they brought in playing so amazingly well. And it's super concerning to me for next year that, you know <laughs> – Who's coming back on defense? I, I, you know, I was talking um, with my publisher before the game. I'm like, who's the best player on defense in this game? Is it Nestis Silvera? Because, like, he's an average defensive tackle, but Bubba Bolden had him been playing real well. The other safeties are playing terribly. The cornerbacks aren't real good. There's no great linebacker. There's backup defensive ends. So maybe Nestis Silvera is your best defensive tackle. And basically what you saw in the game yesterday is the defense Miami's going to have to start next season. You know, notwithstanding they bring in some transfers, which I'm sure they will, I and mean, they're already reaching out. But that's like a big concern. And Manny Diaz has hung his hat on defense, and it flipped a switch this year where the offense all of a sudden is really good, and the defense isn't that good. And you can say, oh, well, the offense is running this fast pace and it's affecting the defense. But no, if you have a great defense and good depth, like that's – that's what you want, you know, and they just don't have that on defense. And it's a shame because it seems like every year for the last 15 years, they've either been pretty good on defense and not good on offense or pretty good on offense and not good on defense. And they just can't get it together. Dating back to Al Golden with Mark D'Onofrio, the offense was good. The defense was terrible. And you can go through, you know, Mark Rick, um, you know, the opposite, like it, it just never comes together. And it just seems like you just took last year's defense and put it with this year's offense uh, well, I'm sorry, a couple of years ago, Stephen, so this was offense, they would have been really, really good. And it's just like they can't get it together. Just nothing ever seems to line up in Miami's favor over the last, you know, two decades, really. And it, it's getting tiresome for Miami fans, and I, I get it. Um, but back to your point, is it the coaching? I mean, I think it's the coaching and the players. Like, everybody takes takes a role in it. And, yeah, you're right. It shouldn't just be fire Blake Baker. That's not going to fix a heck of a lot. Bringing in a, 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 a great defense coordinator might help. Um, but again, it's probably with a new system, right? And Manny Diaz loves the system that he runs, and that's why he brought in Blake Baker. So I don't think you're going to see Manny Diaz bringing in anybody who's going to run anything different. He thinks his system's going to work. Um, and, uh, <laughs> you know, well, I think it's not going to work if you're not the right players, so we'll see. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm with you there. Now, we're talking with Matt Schodell, of course, from Kane Sport. Go to the website, canesport.com. Follow him on Twitter at Kane Sport. And, and Matt, obviously... We all were sick to our stomach watching Derek King, you know, suffer the knee injury. And I was actually saying yesterday and the day before, I don't believe he made the right decision for himself to come back uh, because he's an athlete more than he is a quarterback and an athlete needs his knee. Why come back and risk injury? And look now, now he gets the injury. Now he has to come back. He has no choice. But what does he come back to, Matt? Because if Nicosi stays and doesn't transfer, he's probably your starter. And I know I know Alex is not going to be ready early on, but by midway through the season, if if Nicosi and Van Dyke aren't doing well, by that time you'll get Garcia in there. And then what are you going to do? Are you going to bring in you're going to bring in King towards the end when it's really a, a wasted season for him, or are you going to build for the future with your other guys? I almost feel like this is the worst thing that could have happened to De'Ara King because the U might be thinking more about the future in the second half of the season than worrying about the past with De'Ara King. 
Well, I mean, first of all, let's, you know, let's not rule the Eric King out for nine months until it happens. But with that said, it, look, um, it looks like you know, an ACL. Think, if it's an ACL, yeah, it's it I, 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 I do agree. It looks like that, but there's nothing official yet. So that's all I'm saying. But, um, you know, the, I think there's a lot of fans who wish Miami had opted out of this bowl game because really, what do they have to gain from it? You know, the coaches say it's a reward for the players. But it wasn't really because it's not a bowl game. It's a, a normal bowl game. You get 15 practices to prepare your freshmen for 10 of those for the next season and your sophomores for the next season. Great. It's also for those kids to go up five days early to the bowl and go to all these events and go on shopping sprees um, at Best Buy and, and be around and party and have your teammates with you, you know, for the last time for the seniors. That wasn't the case in this bowl game. You go up the day before, it's basically a road game. Um, there's nothing, you know, they had five practices. Like, why? I, I don't understand. I mean, I, I don't understand still why they wanted to play in this game necessarily. Like, to me, it wasn't worth the risk. And you, and you saw what happened to poor D. Eric. Like, I, I don't know. I, I have so many issues with, I get that you want to play a bowl game. But to say you're, you're not opting out because you want the whole bowl experience and it's a reward for the players, well, it's not really. Because usually you use the bowl game for those extra practices and you have those five days of events, and, and that's not the case for this game. Um, and when this happens with Eric King, it's, it's almost like, you know, when you play Deshaun Watson for, the, for Houston um, in the final games of the season when the season's over right. and he's your franchise guy. And, you know, yeah, he, he didn't suffer a serious injury, but you're like, oh, my gosh. You know, like, if he had, yeah, why is he playing? Yeah. It's like almost the same thing here. Like, I almost rather, if they're going to play in the game, put Tyler Van Dyke in there. You know, but do something different. Um, for next year almost, you know, prepare some of the younger guys. And I know that's almost like throwing the game away and fans aren't going to necessarily agree with that. Pro- problem, but problem, what happens, is, problem is, I hate to interrupt you, but the head coach is also trying to do a PR move by playing that game because he wants to end the season on a positive note. Yeah, well, that's for sure. You don't yeah, not leave yeah. the UNC game as the final Correct. game. So there is some selfish motivation from the coaches to play that game, period. Yeah, well, that's part of the problem. I mean, the coaches want to win at all costs, and I get it. That's what they're paid for. They're paid to win games, you know. But in retrospect, I think a lot of fans would say, oh, you know, I do wish they had played, you know, let Nikosi Perry and Tyler Van Dyke show what they can do in this game. You know, there's no need to risk the Eric King, and basically with a meaningless game, it's not like they're in the playoffs, you know. Um, so it is a shame in, in that aspect. I mean, it's fun for fans to see a bowl game and see all the players play another a last game and all that, but it's just a shame. You know, you feel bad for the Eric. He's such a great guy, and – um, you know, the, the, you could see the team's reaction afterwards. And kudos to the team for, for really sort of getting back after it, even after that injury and, and getting back in that game because they could have easily just said, you know, forget it. And I, I do love that the coaching staff does seem to have instilled in these guys a will to fight. I mean, you saw these players fighting yesterday. They weren't yeah. laying down like this team yeah. did last year, okay? So, so kudos to the coaches at least for that. I mean, you could take issue with all the coaches for maybe not coaching the guys. I mean, when they're 0-3 at the end of last year and 0-2 at the end of this year, you can say, okay, they didn't prepare them. They didn't get better as the season went on. There was numerous players that didn't get better as the year went on and and maybe even got worse than last year, um, some of them. So, you know, I could see that. But you can't say that these coaches did not have this team, like, raring to go and, like, fighting, even when they're down 21 nothing. So, if anything else, you got to give the coaches credit for that. All right, so, Matt, and Matt Schodell from Kane Sport joining us. I can't let you go without asking you this. You're you're so well connected. Uh, you you probably get to talk some, to some boosters, some people inside uh, the administration. Where do they? I know Manny can't get fired. I understand that he's not going anywhere this year. Probably they're probably stuck with him at least two more years financially when they can make a move if they want to make a move by then. So I know they're going to keep him and all of that. But what is the thought process inside? What is what are the boosters talking about? Because there is no way most people can be convinced that Manny's the right guy after these last two years. I wanted Manny as much as anybody else, but you gotta admit when you're wrong, you're wrong. And right now I see I, I think I'm dead wrong about this guy. I don't think he's ever gonna lift the program, but I know that they can't fire him. So what's the thought process in there? Are people still holding out hope? Do you have people that are kind of like I am, like, okay, this isn't the guy? But what are you hearing from inside? Well, you have to remember, Blake, Blake James, the athletic director, He this is his guy. Like, <laughs> he went out on a limb. So you're basically, like, if you're, if, if, the, if, there has to be a tipping point for the boosters with the president because Blake James is not going to do anything to Manny. Manny's his guy. Whatever Manny needs, Blake James is going to do to make sure that Manny can 
hopefully be successful. So there's nothing going to happen in the next year. And, and in all honesty, Minadir did a great job of, of turning around the, the fan sentiment last off season. I mean, he really looked, this is the thing he does really, really well. And it, maybe it's because his dad's a politician, Hype. but he follows, he follows social media so closely and he does what the fans want. He makes the move. Ed Reed, uh, bringing in transfers. You know, he does pay attention to fans, whereas Mark Rick just couldn't, could care less. Al Golden could care less. They do what they think is best and they don't really do the public relations game. So I think over the next few months, you're going to see Manny make some more moves that are going to make fans, you know, sort of mollified again. And, and then they go into next year you with a lot of high hopes again. Um, right now it feels bad. It feels like people should be fired and it feels like the boosters should all withdraw their money. And that's the tipping point, right? It's when boosters say, you know, forget my donation, forget my living will. That's when the changes happen. That has not happened. So until that happens, there's going to be no changes. Yeah, no, I'm with you. I, I, I don't expect any – I don't think they can afford, especially after a COVID year. Oh, my God. There's no way that the, that this uh, this program can actually move on from many. But I'm, I'm interested to see if if the, if those opinions are turning from inside already at this point because, you know, I, I got to – I, I got to feel right now that this is not the guy. Where, where are you uh, with Manny right now? I'm not saying – I'm not even saying to fire him, but I'm just saying right now I'm not convinced yeah. he's the guy. Are you convinced Manny's the guy? Yeah, I mean I, – well, first of all, I mean, boosters are not happy, but they're not – again, they're not pulling their money from anything I'm hearing. Okay. Um, as for my personal opinion, I like Manny as a person, like super nice guy, very yeah. personable. Um, I, I think he's a great defensive coordinator, but to say he's going to be a good or great head coach, the, the jury's out. Nobody can say that right now. I certainly can't say that. I mean, his, his resume so far is not good. He had a losing record last year. He ended this year with two losses. He didn't beat any good teams this year. Um, so I think next, you know, year three really tells a story, right? I think he brought in a couple of good recruiting classes, which is, which is great. I think, I think he gets it in recruiting and in the transfer portal, which is huge because, until he stacks the roster with, quote-unquote, his guys, it's hard to say, right? So next year, and then especially the year after that, if this team's not winning 10 games, then he's just not going to get it done. Because, I mean, that by that point, that's it. That's his team. That's his roster. That's his coaches. They didn't get it done, and you move on. But you have to give him that leeway. I mean, I would tell people, as much as I don't want to hear it, I tell them you got to be patient. And like I said at the beginning of our conversation, like, the coaches that are really good, they've been there for a long time, like several years. You can't just get rid of guys after two or three years. You have to give them a chance to bring in their guys and get these guys in their system for several years and develop guys who at least have the chance to develop them. And if they don't do it, then they're not going to be good head coaches, period. So, like, I, you shouldn't say yet that, oh, Manny Diaz should be fired. He's not a good coach. You can already see he's not going to be a good coach. I can see the argument for that, but I think you have to give him the time. I think he needs at least – the full next season, and then probably the full season after that to be able to make a statement he's a great coach, a good coach, a bad coach, or a terrible coach. You know, check back in two years, and I could give you that answer. But right now, like, it's just not fair to the guy to say after two years as a head coach, like, he's just not going to do it. Makes all the sense opinion. in the world. Makes all the sense in the world. And uh, that's why he does a great job covering the Canes. He is Matt Schodell. Follow him on Twitter at Kane Sport. More importantly, why don't you subscribe, check it out. They do an excellent job at canesport.com there. Uh, Matt, as always, my brother, thank you for the time and the insight. You're always uh, fantastic. Appreciate you. Oh, always, big. I'll talk to you later. You got it. There you go, Matt Shodell. Excellent stuff. And he's right. You got. You got to. Uh, you got to. Of course, give him time. And that's why I tell you, I don't think it's not a matter of firing him because I know it's only been two years. I, for me, I, I I'm not convinced he's the guy. I, I I don't see anything here, but I understand we're gonna have to see him for another year or two. I, I just pray that it drastically changes because if it doesn't, it's gonna be a long, long, long haul to try to. If we get weren't the right prison-holed person. because of finances, we would get rid of him. I'm right. Well, no, these two well, years, it, man, have been. But it's what Shodell says. That would be an an indictment on the AD. So that would, oh, that would okay. get, that so would get Blake James fired. Cause then they, he would have to turn to the president and say, so we wasted all this money on this guy. We had a buyout and everything for him. We had to pay. Right. We had to pay to get him. Right. Yeah. And then, and then you're firing him after two years. Then what the hell are you doing here for? If you can't find the right coach, get out of here. And so that's where Blake James, that's why Matt says he's going to do whatever to help, you know, Manny succeed. Cause He's got it's ba- yeah based on what Manny does he's he gonna not, decide whether he's still got a job. He didn't hire Larinaga. 
He didn't hire Katie Meyer. Okay? Right. He didn't hire the baseball coach. Um, well, he kind of did, but he was already in place, and he was going to be the guy, and it was that was kind of already that plan was the in pitcher. place. I, I forget the kid's yeah, yeah, name. Yeah. So, yeah. so it, know what, it, yeah. it, it's um, it, it's one of those things where this was his guy. The lone thing on his on, a, on, on one of the major programs of, of the university. Because I don't know, he might have hired the the crew coach. Or the soccer coach, or you know, I don't know. You know what I mean? Maybe the diving coach. Yeah, whatever. I don't know about that kind of stuff. But of the big sports, this and this is the biggest. Yeah, this is your this is your cash cow that yeah. makes everything else go. Yeah. And by the way, this is for you from Lisa Rose. I refuse to go to games in Buffalo. You get spit on, cursed at, beer thrown on you. They're drunk and stupid by 10 a.m. in the parking lots. Jump off the top of vans onto tables, body slamming one another. Scary. Wow. Okay. 